In this video, we're going to discuss multi-factor models in investing. So the most widely known model for estimating the expected return of a security is the capital asset pricing model, where it's modeling the expected return as a, a function of a single factor, which is capturing systematic risk. This is beta. So when we talk about the beta of a security, we're saying how many units of risk are in this security with respect to changes in the overall market. So the systematic risk, remember, that's risk that cannot be diversified away. It's saying, how much does this securities return a function of changes in the overall market? Okay, so the market goes up. Let's say we've got a beta 1.5. We say, okay, the, the market goes up by 1%. Then this security goes up by 1.5%. Now, the single factor model is nice for its simplicity. However, we might think about this systematic risk. It includes so many different things. It includes expectations about the overall economy and what the GDP is going to be. It includes expectations about what the inflation rate is going to be, what interest rates are going to be. All these different macroeconomic factors are part of this systematic risk. And so you might consider and say, hey, maybe different types of securities react in different ways to changes in interest rates, to changes in inflation. For example, might a bank respond differently to changes in interest rates than a grocery store? Sure, that's reasonable to think that. And so when we just use a single factor that measures systematic risk, that, that's a great start. But some people have said, well, look, we can actually think about breaking this systematic risk into its component parts so that we might more accurately predict the expected return of this security and when we do that when we have multiple factors here so we have we could have this factor we have another factor we have another factor for interest rates and so forth we have different factors we call that a multi-factor model so i want to give you just an easy example so let's say that we are going to estimate a two-factor model for a fictional company called happy bank and our two factors we're going to make this really simple we're just going to have inflation and interest rates those will be the only two factors in the model and so we, we go and we estimate the model with regression analysis, and we get the following result. And so we've got this point 11 here. That's going to be the expected excess return for Happy Bank. So that's 11%. That's the expected excess return. But now we've got to think about our two factors. We've got a factor here, and we've got a factor here. And each of these factors, we, so it's a coefficient estimate, is what we call this in a regression. So this 0 0.2 is telling us that if we have a one percentage point increase in inflation, okay, so we didn't we have an unexpected one percentage point increase in inflation, then that would lead to a 0 0.2 point, uh, percentage point increase in the expected return. Okay, now conversely, now we have a negative sign with our other factor. So that means that if we were to have a, an unexpected 1% increase, 1 percentage point increase in interest rates, then that would predict that we would have a decrease of 0.4 percentage points in the expected return. Okay, so we, we, we don't have to have just two factors here. We could have a third factor that, that measures GDP. We could have a fourth factor. We could have a fifth factor. Uh, probably the most famous of the multi-factor models is the FAMA French model. Uh, and then also we've got FAMA French Carhartt and so forth. And we'll talk about all of those in the videos to come.